Hello and welcome back to the David67 Celtic News YouTube channel. Obviously a wonderful morning, um, beautiful and sunny and blue skies where I live. And um, the blue skies came back last night in the pouring rain at Celtic Park with a wonderful 7-1 win for Celtic. Um, I think probably the best performance of the season. Certainly right up there with the 6 nothing thrashing of Aberdeen earlier in the season. Just going to do a wee post-match review, have a wee look at the goals, have a wee chat regarding which players played well, and just a couple of wee, I think, um, areas of concern. Uh, although I uh, do feel a bit bad putting a dampener on such a wonderful win and it was um, wonderful to see Celtic back top of the league albeit for half an hour or so um, as we racked up the goals against Dundee and as Rangers struggled to stay one nothing down to Kilmarnock throughout that first half um, they managed to scramble uh, back into a 2-1 win and they are back top of the table. However, Celtic have tons and tons of momentum. They've had uh, three halves in a row where they've played excellent attacking football and I think the tide has turned and all the momentum is with Celtic rather than our across-city rivals. Before we crack on the video, please, if you are new to the channel, seeing these videos for the first time, do please click that subscribe button. Um, we've managed to reach 400, which, as I've said before, for many channels is um, small potatoes, a minor thing. But for me, um, when I'm doing this just for fun, um, in my semi-retirement, um, it's wonderful to get one subscriber and... It's been wonderful to get 400 subscribers and so we're pushing on to 500 and it would be uh, great to get to 500 by uh, the end of the season. And so anybody who does click that subscribe button does make me massively happy. So cracking on with the game, um, Dundee actually for the first few minutes were slightly on top um, they had an early corner save for Joe Hart and then a narrow miss however then Celtic very much got on top took control of the game um, first goal was a really nice um, curling free kick by uh, Matt O'Reilly uh, with a direct free kick after Yang was taken out by Owen Beck who may still be on Celtic's radar for that left-back position in the summer, as I suspect he's dropping further and further down Liverpool's um, um, list of left-backs currently. Um, lovely cross by Matt O'Reilly, and uh, Carter Vickers at the back post outjumped the defender and uh, headed it into the goal, putting us one nothing up. Um, as I was saying in a couple of my comments replies yesterday I thought the key for Celtic was get an early goal and so Celtic got an early goal and then put add another goal as soon as possible and and then keep on top and that, that should allow them to relax and continue their attacking free flowing football and for possibly the first time this season um, Celtic uh, took the initiative um, and then ran home their advantage again, 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 and again. Second goal was Adam Ida. Um, again, nice header from Ida, again from around the six yard box. Uh, goalkeeper had no chance. Um, lovely little um, one, two, three set of passes from Alsa Johnston to Yang back to Alsa Johnston, who hit the byline. Uh, lovely curling cross, and Ida. Uh, very, very clever uh, header, um, driving the ball back high past the goalkeeper. And great to see Ida um, leading the line so well. Uh, he was involved in a lot of Celtic's best play and does show that he is uh, a pretty much an all-round striker and it does look like Celtic and Norwich are 
um, looking at a potential permanent deal in the summer and Ida is said to be very very keen to come to Celtic with the expectation of Champions League football. I for one um, um, think that on the basis of his game so far uh, would be excellent. It does give Celtic a different option. I think he and, and Kyogo can play together and certainly he shows the ability to be a focal point and link the attack and get himself into the box and is good with both feet and in the air and obviously um, very good at taking penalty kicks as well. So um, I think Celtic uh, should look to sign Ida in the summer along with another good quality striker um, and then I think we will be very, very blessed in terms of resources to come off the bench and rotate the strikers as well. 3 nothing up uh, with Matt O'Reilly and uh, ghosting in at the back post. Lovely cross by Greg Taylor and uh, O'Reilly breaking into the box and um, scoring from about six yards with a lovely cushioned header. Um, thought Matt O'Reilly pretty much got back to his best. Lots of key passes involved in a lot of Celtic's best play. Got himself into the box and um, scored a goal, set up a couple of other goals, hit the bar. And um, certainly for me, it was a good 9 out of 10, even 9.5 out of 10 type performance for Matt O'Reilly. And um, I think a combination of him and McGregor uh, in the centre uh, with Tomoki Iwata or Rio Hitati uh, forming that triangle um, will lead us to uh, a double this season. As long as all three keep fit and as long as Hitati comes back and... Uh, and Tomoki Iwata is an excellent deputy for his Japanese uh, teammate. Fourth goal was a Dyson Maida wonderful curling left foot shot. Again, some nice interchange down the right. Um, um, Alsa Johnston into uh, Adam Ida, out to Yang. Lovely pass by Yang into Dyson Maida and a uh, very clever left foot shot um, by Dyson Maida, giving the goalkeeper no chance. And it would be great to see if um, Dyson Maida does have his scoring boots on, because again, uh, if he does, Celtic are going to score a lot of goals over the next few weeks. Fifth goal, um, Alistair Johnston, wonderful cross um, to the back post, and Greg Taylor ghosting in, uh, very calmly finishing, 5 nothing up. And it was wonderful to see so many Celtic players smiling for once, looking happy, looking relaxed, responding to the crowd, and obviously enjoying playing uh, football and enjoying playing a game uh, with all their teammates. Set the goal just before half-time, Callum McGregor, uh, one two with Greg Taylor after a wonderful cutback ball by uh, Yang again from the right. He very cleverly um, got himself half a yard um, past Owen Beck, turning him inside and outside and then back inside. Lovely cross across the box um, to McGregor, past to Taylor, back to McGregor, and a lovely curling shot from around the penalty spot. Goalkeeper again, no chance. 6 nothing up at half-time. Just before that, of course, Dundee did have a goal disallowed. Ball over the top. Um, Liam Scales defending very, very poorly. Out-muscled by Curtis Main. Um, CCV couldn't cross cover across quick enough, unfortunately. And Main did score. However, uh, Main was a few inches offside. And so this time Liam Scales was bailed out. Um, and we'll come back to Scales and Welsh's ability to defend at the end of this wee piece. On came um, Daniel Kelly to replace Callum McGregor at half-time. Doesn't look like McGregor was injured or in any way needed to come off, and it looked like uh, Rogers simply was taking advantage of the fact that we were 6 nothing up to give our captain a wee bit of a rest and also... Um, see how well Ka uh, Kelly coped with a half of top-level football. Um, Kelly played um, perfectly fine. 
he managed to score a very good right-footed curling uh, shot to the top corner. Again, Yang did very well down the right wing. Lovely cross from outright on the wide to Kelly coming into the edge of the box and curled a great shot, as say, into the top uh, corner. Unstoppable shot. And it, again, was wonderful to see how well Kelly fitted into the side. 18 years old, he's been one of the stars of the B team this year. Um, and it was also nice to see the B team won their game 7 nothing yesterday as well, with Daniel Cummings scoring a hat-trick. So it does look like Celtic do have quite a number of very talented young players. The problem is how we're going to get them from the B team into the first team squad. Um, a lot of people feel it's too much of a risk moving a 17, 18, 19 year old straight from the B team into the number one team. It, um, as I was saying in the reply to someone yesterday, um, players such as Kieran Tierney, uh, Kenny Dugleish, Paul McStay, and many, 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 many others in the old days, uh, not Kieran Tierney's old days, but it's the same same uh, examples. Uh, they all came into the Celtic team, uh, first team, 18, 17, 18, 19, and within a year or so were becoming regular first team starters. And for that reason, that's why I did suggest that Lennon Miller might well be a good option for Celtic to sign in the summer. Um, he'll be 18 uh, in August, and I think he's more than good enough given how well he's been for 18 months in the Motherwell first team, given how well he's played at under 16, 17, under 19 international level, um, uh, given how, um, despite the fact he's only 17, 18, he is uh, strong, muscular and tall, and so I think he would actually do well in Celtic squad, um, in the first team squad uh, from the summer onwards. However, it's not clear whether Celtic are genuinely looking to buy him or not in the summer or whether Miller would want to move to Celtic at this stage or whether he might want another year or two at his uh, parent club before he transferred a wee bit similar to um, the uh, decision that Conor Baden made at Aberdeen uh, a couple of years ago when Ange Postacoglu um, first and wanted to sign him for Celtic. Hasn't really benefited Barron staying in Aberdeen for those couple of years. Um, and I think if Miller does want to move on to a bigger club, the sooner the better. I think one of the things we often forget as Celtic fans is that for the European competitions, there is this uh, requirement of um, Scottish and homegrown, home-trained players, adding up to eight at least. Um, and with us having David Turnbull moving on in the winter transfer window, and I highly suspect that given the fact that Mikey Johnson's had a successful time so far for West Brom, I suspect that Johnston will be very keen to move on to West Brom permanently in the summer. And so that does actually leave us a wee bit short of experienced uh, good quality Scottish and home trained players for next season. And so I think looking for good quality Scottish players or home trained players is going to be important. Um, and as, as things stand, uh, only a couple of the B team players really are good enough to step into the first team as things stand. Celtic saw the game out quite nicely. Um, um, we hit the bar again with Luis Palma very late in the game. Kyogo probably at the front post uh, should have done a wee bit better. Um, and so, um, um, but we'll take uh, take a seven one win. Um, slightly disappointingly, uh, late in the game, Dundee did get a goal back, by which time they were down to ten men. Um, Welsh and Scales got rather confused and mixed up. No one really knew who was marking who, which then meant there was a two to one overlap or at the back post. Alison Johnson couldn't do anything to stop um, the unmarked player and um, 
Dundee did pull one game, not one goal back. So uh, for me, um, Liam Scales uh, and Stephen Welsh aren't really quite up to it as things stand at the moment. I think Scales got away with quite a wee few things in the first half because he had CCV, uh, who has so much more pace than Scales, both in terms of running pace and also mental pace of reactions. Um, CCV covered back and bailed out the scale several times. As I said, Scales was at fault for me for the main goal that was dis disallowed and he and Welsh in combination were at fault for the goal that Dundee did score at the end of the game. Um, so for me, that's probably the only um, slight worry coming out of this game is that uh, with Navrocki out injured for another week or two, uh, Scales and Welsh really aren't up to it um, as replacements and certainly uh, as a twosome in the middle um, um, are too weak really for Celtic to be able to cope with a good attacking team which of course is who we potentially are playing at the weekend with Hearts depending on which Hearts team turns up the one that uh, beat us 2 nothing, and the one that had a lot of good games uh, up until recently, or the one that got thumped 5 nothing by um, Rangers um, and then struggled to a draw with Hibs last night. So for me, players of the match, I would give Matt O'Reilly uh, um, probably player of the match, very, very closely followed by Yang, um, I thought he and Alistair Johnston are excellent down that right-hand side. Alistair Johnston, I think, also is right up there in the nine, nine and a half, so alongside O'Reilly and Yang. Ida, I think, deserves a good eight and a half to nine, um, uh, as he did so much more other than just score the goal. Callum McGregor looked very busy, got himself further and further forward. Dyson Maida had a good game. Taylor looked much more assured in his passing. A couple of good, very good crosses, scored a goal. And as I said earlier on, Alistair Johnston involved with many of Celtic's best things. Um, and um, lots of uh, praise goes to him as well. thought Daniel Kelly came on well for an 18-year-old. He coped very well with the cauldron of Celtic Park at its noisiest and bestest. Didn't look out, really out of place in midfield. And Tomoki Iwata, another very efficient, quiet game. Mopping things up, linking things up, supporting the, the back four, uh, supporting the, the defence, helping the ball uh, get restarted and moving forward. And I thought Tomoki Iwata also deserved high praise for his game as well. Um, and so, really for me... Um, Lots and lots and lots and lots of very good things. Slight caveat, slight uh, down note with uh, Liam Scales um, um, being a bit slow, uh, struggling, especially when CCV went off for his wee rest towards the end of the game. Um, nice also to see Lewis Palmer getting back to some of his better form um, and also um, did allow couple of our players who have been coming back from injury recently, CCV and Greg Taylor, a bit of a rest and has allowed our captain a bit of a rest as well for 45 minutes. So uh, we go into the game against Hearts at the weekend, still two points behind. Uh, we should be going in with uh, the same squad as happened uh, last night. Um, I think we go with the same starting lineup and we go out with the same attack. And I don't think Hearts or anybody could could have loved with the way that Celtic played in that first half. And there do appear to be discussions going on behind the scenes um, between Celtic and Norwich, looking to see what would be the asking fee for Ida. Norwich in the past have quoted three or four million. Uh, it may be the more goals that Ida scores for Celtic. Um, may add on a few more millions um, but um, 
I don't think when Ida signed on loan, many of us would have been calling for Celtic to have a loan deal purchase option on the deal. Um, the great majority of Celtic fans were very sceptical about him joining the club um, and thought he was a waste of time. He has been far from a waste of time. And it does look like, as several pundits said, such as Brian Gunn, the ex-Aberdeen in Scotland and Norwich goalkeeper, um, said that if Ida was given the service, he'll score lots of goals. And uh, he wasn't getting the service at Norwich, and so was struggling to score goals now that he's into an attacking Celtic side with good balls coming off the right, particularly from Johnston and Ida um, and Yang. Often good balls coming from the left from Taylor, Maida and Palma, or through the middle by McGregor and uh, O'Reilly. He is scoring lots of goals for us. I was also very happy that several players who so many Celtic fans and journalists have written off um, have come through. Um, it was great to see uh, Yang in particular showing the skills that attracted Celtic to him uh, in the, the last year or so. He, for me, is a very talented player who obviously needed that wee bit longer to settle into Scotland. And I think we are seeing the best of him now. Um, and it was nice also to see Greg Taylor and Alistair Johnson back to their best. So lots and lots of positive things and great to see McGregor and O'Reilly forming the best central midfield two by far in Scotland and being back to their best. So I think we will finish things off at that point there. And again, a wee reminder for all those new to the channel, um, if you've enjoyed the video, enjoyed the style, enjoyed that slightly alternative way of looking at Celtic, please do click that subscribe button, get the numbers pushing up past 400, on towards 500. And for all those who've liked the video, please do click that like video, like button, because it convinces that YouTube, this is a half decent creator and means other people get to see me rambling on um, in a roundabout fashion about the club I love and the club I've loved for 52 years since I was four. And as always, please do feel free, uh, if that's your sort of thing, to pop uh, pleasant, constructive, polite comments in the comment section, things you want to uh, discuss, things you want to give an opinion on, things you want to create a debate on, and um, I will reply as quick as I can, and others will chip in as well, which is absolutely wonderful and was one of the main reasons that I thought in my semi-retirement I would do a Celtic fan YouTube site. So, for today, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye and hail, hail.